I grew up working class, which means we were poor. The community was mostly Asian, black, and Latino. I was born in Chinatown. Everyone was Chinese. My mother didn't like that. She convinced my father he needed a lawn to mow. And we moved to the suburbs. I was adopted when I was eight months old. My parents named me James Michael Johnson. My brothers and sisters and friends were white. I thought it was, too. I don't remember any prejudice when I was a kid. When you're young, you judge each other by how fast you run, how much fun you are to be with, things like that. Race doesn't come into it. Not until later. As a child, I had no consciousness of race. I was sheltered by my mother. She read Life magazine and was obsessed with the Kennedys. She dressed me up and cut my hair like John John and told me one day I would be president. It was a nightmare. My father was born here, but my mother was an immigrant. She had a Filipino accent, which I was self-conscious about. I'd be out with my friends and uh, she'd call, Danny, Danny, come home, time for dinner. And I'd think, oh, oh man, does she have to talk like that? First time somebody sang Ching Chong Chinaman to me. I didn't know what it meant. I thought it was a song. I came home singing it. My father called me over. Why are you singing that? Do you know what that means? You come from a great people with a great history. Why do you degrade yourself like that? And I remember how serious his face looked and how angry his voice sounded and the shame that I felt. I knew I wasn't white, but I didn't know what it meant to be Korean. Where I grew up, there was nothing. There was no information about Korea or Asia or Asian Americans. My parents didn't know, and there was nothing at school. There weren't many Asian people on television, and sometimes they weren't even played by Asians. Remember that Kung Fu TV series? They had a Caucasian guy playing a Chinese guy. They made his eyes slanty and had him talk real slow like he was Confucius or stupid or something. Why'd they do that? I didn't understand. When I asked my mother, she said, Maybe they couldn't find any Chinese actors. That really bugged me. What about Bruce Lee? People would come up to me and ask me if I knew Bruce Lee. I'd say, well, no, not personally. Then they'd say, yeah, but you know Kung Fu, right? Sometimes I couldn't help it. I'd tell them, yeah, I know Kung Fu. Then they'd say, wow, like I was bad, like now they respected me. I didn't know Kung Fu, but if I told them the truth, 
They wouldn't believe me anyway. They'd just say, yeah, you do. You know it. You just don't want to show it. So I figured, all right, if that's what gets respect, I'll learn it. My father had two jobs, as a janitor in an office building and as a dishwasher. He was a grown man, but his boss called him boy. My mother worked as a beautician in a salon that catered to San Francisco society women. In 1970, she was paid $1.25 an hour. That's $10 a day plus tips. Some of these rich white women would only tip her a dime. At the end of the day, she let me count her tips for her. On a good day, she made $5. On a bad day, maybe 250. That had a profound impact on me. My mother couldn't protect me forever. When I was 13, I got my ass kicked. Bad. I came home bloody. She put a bandage on my face and sent me to my father. My father was a decorated World War II combat veteran. Once in Italy, another soldier called him a chink. He said, excuse me, but you don't call me that. The other soldier laughed. So my father pulled out his rifle, pointed it right at the soldier's head and says, you say that again and I'll blow you away. The soldier never said it again. That's what I had to live up to. My mother grew up in Seattle. When World War II came, her family lost their home, everything they had, because they had Japanese faces. That was their crime. She gave up her future. She spent four years in concentration camps in California and Arkansas, instead of four years at college. After the war, she worked as a maid, scrubbing floors for a white family in Chicago. My father was born in Hawaii. During the war, he fought for the Phi 22nd in Europe to prove he was a good American. When the war was over and he came home, he sat down in a restaurant in New York and ordered his first American meal since the war. And the owner told him, we don't serve Japs. They took the abuse, didn't complain, because they had to. They would never admit how much racism had hurt them. I was angry and confused. I did drugs and I had problems with my parents. They just didn't have a clue about what I was going through. They didn't understand why I couldn't be their well-adjusted adopted son. I'd ask them, where are my parents? And they'd say, we are your parents. And I'd say, why did they abandon me? And they'd say, but we chose you. And I'd say, I want to know what it means to be Korean. And they'd say, why? You're an American. My father would lose his temper and beat me. He'd call me an ingrate and tell me if they hadn't adopted me, I'd be a starving peasant. As soon as I could, I left home and went away to college. Oh, <laughs> 
There are a thousand ways racism can be perpetrated against you. It can be out front and blatant, or the subtlest thing. At some restaurants, if you're with a white person, it's fine. They'll say, hello, welcome, come on in. But if you're with another Asian person, it's like, hmm, what do they want? Where should we put them? Then, if you're with your family or a whole group of Asians, it's, oh my God, we're being invaded by an Asian horde. It doesn't matter if they're rednecks or liberals. You're talking to someone. You think you're relating. Then they say, you know, you speak really good English. What are you? They have to know before they'll talk to you. What are you, Chinese or Japanese? Like there's a right or wrong answer. Say you're Chinese, they think, oh, I love Chinese food. Say you're Korean, they think, oh, you want a grocery store. Say you're Vietnamese, they think, oh, boat people. What are you? They have to know. Say you're American and they say, no, really. What are you? I was in this restaurant, this pancake house. And the waitress came up and said, So, Sally, no lice today. And this nearby table of jocks bust out laughing and repeated it. No lice today. I didn't say anything. Everything in me wanted to. But I didn't say anything. <laughs> 